Good morning, it's the 11th day of September today, and welcome to the Daily Post. I'm Chris Tankey from the Brisbane Revival Fellowship, and we bring you some scriptures and some thoughts and some ideas each day to help you uh, along the way. We begin, as usual, with a scripture, and this morning it comes from Psalm 110 and verse 5. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, we need to focus on Proverbs chapters 10 and 11 and 12, and 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The facts of the day. The good news of the gospel is that there is a resource of divine mercy which is able to overcome a contradiction within our own souls which we cannot otherwise overcome. The man who hates God is not far from the kingdom. It is a spiritually indifferent man who has placed himself almost beyond hope. Moral indignation is jealousy with a halo. The motivational thought for today, some people are so afraid to die that they never begin to live. Live, take risks, laugh, be laughed at, serve, serve God. On this day, in 1557, Catholic and Lutheran theology was debated in a town of worms, not a can of worms, a town of worms. In 1777, American troops, led by George Washington, were defeated by the British at the Battle of Brandywine Creek during the American War of Independence. In 1875, <clears throat> on this day, the publication of the first newspaper cartoon strip. In 1945, physician Willem J. Kolff performed the first successful kidney dialysis using his artificial kidney machine in the Netherlands. In 1946, on this day, the first, well, believed to be the first mobile long-distance car-to-car telephone conversation took place. In 1962, the British pop group The Beatles recorded their first single, Love Me Do, at the Abbey Road Studios in North London. In 1967, Surveyor 5 made its first chemical analysis of lunar material. And of course, today is 9-11. Uh, on the September the 11th, 2001, there were several attacks on the Twin Towers in the United States and the Pentagon building. And in 2018, on this day, Russia launched its largest military exercise since 1981. It involved 300,000 personnel and included Chinese troops. The personal story of the day is a quotation uh, from a book called Sleepless in America by Robert Sullivan. It afflicts 70,000 million Americans and it's faulted for 38,000 deaths each year. It costs the US $70 billion worth of productivity every year. Studies show that 64% of teens blame it for poor school performance. Researchers say the most severe cases occur between the ages of 30 and 40. One study suggests that the condition impacts 50% of those over 65. Treatments involve everything from mouth guards to herbal teas to medication. What is this condition? Well, it's insomnia. Americans just can't sleep. As strange as it may sound, sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is go to sleep. In 1 Kings chapter 19 and verses 1 to 8, Elijah fled for his life, ran 10 miles, and ended up 
under a juniper tree, praying that God would take his life. What did God do? Well, he sent an angel to feed Elijah and put him to sleep. The longest commandment in the Bible, which is in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11, has to do with rest. One other quote. There is only one other living creature that has as much trouble resting as we do. Not the dogs, they doze. Not the bears, they hibernate. Cats invented the catnap. And sloths slumber 24 hours a day. Most animals know how to rest. There is one exception. These creatures are woolly, simple-minded and slow. Sheep can't sleep. For sheep to sleep, everything must be just right. No predators, no tension in the flock, no bugs in the air, no hunger in the belly. Everything has to be just so. Sound familiar? Well, a couple of scriptures that refer to it. The first is Psalm 127 and verse 2. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. The second from Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 24. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and and thy sleep shall be sweet. The devotional thoughts for the day. The first is entitled The Last Hours. The scripture comes from Matthew chapter 26 and and verse 64 with further references from Matthew 26, verses 57 to 67. Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. We're going to study several of the most crucial events in the week before the Saviour's crucifixion. The first of Jesus' several trials held throughout the night after he was arrested in Gethsemane took place at the home of Israel's high priest. Under Jewish law, two witnesses had to be ready to give testimony against the accused, and their testimonies had to agree. The trumped-up charges against Jesus were immediately obvious, when even this basic requirement of justice could not be met. Finally, Two men said that they remembered Jesus saying he would destroy and rebuild the temple in three days. That's quoted from verse 61. Even this wasn't really accurate. Jesus had said to the Jews who demanded a miraculous sign from him, as we read in John 2 verse 19, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. But he was speaking of his own death and resurrection. Jesus did not respond to this charge, so the high priest asked him directly, that thou shalt tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God, as we read in Matthew 26 and verse 63. Jesus did not remain silent, but affirmed his deity. His words of absolute truth became an excuse for his enemies to charge him with blasphemy for making himself equal with God, and they condemned him to death. We must understand these final days of Jesus on earth, culminating in his death and resurrection, if we want to grasp the extent and meaning of his love for us. And we'll carry on with that for the rest of the week. The second thought is entitled, The Arrival of the Son of Man and the Scripture, from Matthew 24, verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the man, Son of Man be. Jesus refers to his return. The people who spread out their cloaks and palm branches believed this was now, when he entered Jerusalem. The disciples suspected it would happen later and asked when this would be. Jesus reveals that his return will take place when heaven rolls up like a cloak and it will be as clear as lightning flash from the east to the west. No one can miss it. He will return in power and glory, 
trumpets will sound, thousands of angels will descend, and Jesus will come, visible to everyone. Just prior to this, the sun will be darkened, the stars will fall, the mountains and the cities will collapse. Never before experienced earthquakes will do much damage. All this will take place suddenly, like a thief in the night, as we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 2. It will be preceded by the greatest degradation and decadence in the history of mankind. It will occur suddenly, as in Noah's time, when the flood came, or as in Lot's time, when God judged Sodom and Gomorrah. It will happen unexpectedly to selfish, pleasure-seeking people stained by sin and revolt. Jesus will sit on his throne and judge the nations. He will take possession of and restore the kingdoms of the earth. He will fulfill that which the saints have longed for and dreamed about for generations. All the promises of Scripture and all the Spirit has witnessed about will be fulfilled. Then he will truly be the king, wearing a crown of glory. But in order for this to occur, he needed to first bear a different crown, a crown of thorns. Let's look at a, uh, another uh, thoughts in verse this morning. And uh, today we turn our attention to a very bright and cheerful a chorus, 163, He Gives Me Joy. This is a, a, a really comforting, I think, a really comforting and joyful uh, set of thoughts. It's uh, two verses, the first of which says, He gives me joy when I am feeling sad. A song to sing, a song that makes me glad. He comforts me when I am so afraid. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And the second verse, he gives me strength when I am feeling weak. He lifts me up when I have fallen down. And on my head, a glory crown, crown to wear. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. The facts of the day. Antarctica is 98% ice, 2% barren rock. The average thickness of the ice sheet is 7,200 feet or 2,194 metres. This amounts to 90% of all the ice and 70% of all the fresh water in the world. If the ice cap were to melt, the sea level would rise by an average of 230 feet or 70 metres. Finland has the greatest number of islands in the world. It has 179,584 islands. Hmm. The closing thought for today, the most important thing in the conversation is to hear what isn't being said. Thank you for being with us again this morning. We hope that you've enjoyed and been uplifted by the Daily Post. We look forward to your company again tomorrow morning. Have a blessed day. Bye for now.